And we're live. How are you going, guys? Sorry, we're a little bit late. My computer just completely freaked out for some reason. So welcome. How are you going? Back with Lorenzo and um, caught in thought. How are you going, Lorenzo? I'm doing good. I'm good. Maybe we went into a bit of a time loop. So caught in thought, you know, it's a matter of <laughs> understanding. I would say, you know, are you thinking your thoughts or are your thoughts thinking you? Have you decided where they come from, what's coming in, what's going out? And if we're going to do all of that, we're also related in Hello Wayne. We're also going to do that related to time and what is time and how you can work with time instead of time working with you and all related to what you think and what you believe and how you use your own personal power to create the life that you would like to live. Yes, time. Time. It's an interesting concept. Does it even exist or is there just now? And, you know, is is time something we're in or do we emit time? Because, of course, time backwards is emit. Just like um, Dr. Emmett Brown, right? Dr. Emmett Brown from, um, <laughs> what was that movie with Michael J. Fox? The time movie? Anyway, time. Uh, back to well, the yeah, future. Back to the future. I mean, it, it's really a matter of, of, of everyone's thinking, are, are they a victim or are they the hero? Are they in control or are they being controlled? We see so many people complaining about life or government or things or bits or rules or laws or medicals or, or what have you, weather, uh, you know, monetary considerations, food considerations, etc. cetera. And, and my understanding is all of these challenges can come back to you and that you can create the life you want to live once you understand how you are fully in control of yourself you know, 100%. And I would say that even includes your time because I would say time is a relation of intensity. Uh, in other words, the more you do, the more you increase your time. Because if I sit here for an hour and do nothing, which I've done in my life, and you go, oh, I can't believe that hour just disappeared. Or if I spend that hour doing a million different things, you know, because I feel like creating what have you, then my time would be different than the time where I'm not doing all of those things, if you see what I mean. Mm. Yeah, well, time is definitely not, not a constant, right? We've all had these experiences where time, you know, it, it, change, it changes, right? It can go very slow or it can go very quickly. And, of course, you know, we can, we can take control of that. If we give that control to the outside world, um, then it, it's controlling us, I guess. You know, it, there's a lot of talk about the quickening and, time speeding up and all this kind of stuff. But the thing with that is, you know, over the last four years, especially there's been a lot more information coming at us. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're taking more in and that is affecting time, I think. But, you know, it, you sit down and, and meditate or whatever, or, you know, hang out with a, a, you know, young child and talk to them and time seems to slow down, right? So, so what is time and are we controlling it or is it controlling us? Well, I would feel since that seemed like a question that time is a thought and time is a process and everything we make comes from our choices of what we emit as Campbell says. So do we emit happiness? You know, do we emit abundance? Do we emit currency? Do we emit a desire for love? Uh, you know, most people are feeling or a lot of people have felt, including myself over the most of my life, is that you know, we're a victim somehow. We're a victim of our thoughts that are coming in or the circumstances that are coming in or what's being allowed to us or taken away. And what can happen when you switch the perspective is you realize, as Campbell said, you are emitting. Right? You are emitting your desires. You are emitting your, 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 your call for love. Or your call for currency or your call for experience you're literally asking the world what it is or telling the world i would say it's even more than asking because if you ask you not get you're like still waiting for something out there to give you something so you're literally telling the world what it is you wish to experience and how you wish to be and what you wish to do and i would say that includes time and the trick has been because we talked about you no know, caught in thought the trick is you know how do thoughts interfere with the desires most of us have for creating the kind of life we want to live, including how we want to experience time. Yeah, man, the, the internal external, right? Like we do get to choose 
a hundred percent what goes on inside of us you know that that's where our ultimate choice is but you know we don't we don't get to choose what goes around outside of us you know we don't no, no one person can go out and change the world they can influence the world for sure but but try changing it try to try just changing a person you know just walk up to a random person and tell them to change and see what happens you'll you'll find out very quickly that you, you, we don't have the power to change anyone just like if someone walked up to you and said change you'd probably punch them in the nose right because you know that that we have but we have the choice inside of us and the thing is everything that we want that we desire it's all inside of us anyway so it's more of a game of you know understanding who we are inside and then emitting bringing that out into the outside realm so that we can experience it you know whether that be a relationship whether it be wealth whether it be experience whatever it is when we become it inside we we emit it and that means that we can then interact with it but of course the outside world's always trying to and other people they're always trying to stop that right they're always trying to tell you no no my point of view is correct and it is but only for them not for us I mean, everyone can recall probably the endless summers they had when they were little. You know, yeah, we're, we're Campbell and I are going to talk about this to, to the end of the channel, you know, a, a new uh, a workshop that we're giving. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to break a little bit of this boundary now in that who you are and finding yourself and who you wish to be is all related to time. You know, Kathy over there said, Kathy Childers, you have to change yourself first. So I would say yes, but in some ways it's more a, a matter of uncovering who you've always been. You know, I think from when we're small, mm. when we're little, you know, as I've recapitulated my life, as I've gone back and understood how I used to see things, like like try, try and tell, tell a child, you know, children don't look at clocks, children don't look at calendars, children don't look at days of the week. You know, children aren't watching this time cycle, which is imposed on us from the outside. Once you start going to school, you got to be at school at 8.30, your lunch is at 12, you know, you got to, you know, recess is at 10.15, you got to come back at 10.27, and then the bells are going, bzz, bzz, but, you know, and it's it's inculcated, this system of breaking your life up into these silly little moments of time, whereas, uh, as I mentioned, when I was five, six, seven, you know, the summers went on for a million years. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the days lasted for, 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 for a month. And that was because my vision at the time was not the same time I see or a lot of people see as adults. And as I say, Marcel LeMay, you know, time is going quickly for you. I think when we get older and we get bored and we have less of a perspective on our life, uh, you know, when we tunnel into what, what's possible or what we're told is possible and we agree, and then, you know, it shrinks because, you know, if only six things are possible, then of course your time's going fast because there's only six things you can pay attention to in that hour. But if you can pay attention to six million things in that hour, let's say, you know, or you're creating, then your time is going to be six million times longer or it will mm. seem that way anyways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely believe the only time there is is now. You know, I mean, when we get down to it, if, if you know, we, we actually cannot prove that we were not just put here five minutes ago with all of our memories intact, right? And, you know, and people love to say, oh, well, time goes quicker as you get older because, you know, there's more behind you. Well, okay, if you believe it, you know, <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. Like, like it, it's that's, that's someone else's perspective that you've got from the outside world. So uh, what was that? um comment uh we need to change or something um you have to change yourself first yeah well yes but 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 the change is to me is remembering right and remember means to put back mm. together um so you know i like to say you know the statue isn't finished when there's nothing more to add the statue is finished when there's nothing more to take away so we have to remember who we are at our core and and all the stuff to take away is all the crap right that's been thrown at us from the outside world again. So there's this duality that we live in. And, and I'm, you know, the whole good, bad duality, I, I tend to think that that is a, a belief that's imposed. I think the, the only real, you know, duality is the internal world v the external world. And, and this is it. You know, the external world gives us information for sure. But we need to take that in and run it through our own belief systems or whatever you want to call it, but and get our own perspective on it. Otherwise, we're just being told 
what to do. You know, so ultimately that's our ultimate choice is we we get to make the choice on on what our perspective is. You know, we, we yeah, sure, we can believe the outside world, but, but you don't have to. I'd say it's much better to come to your own conclusions about who you are and through that, then you create the external world. You create what, what experiences you can interact with. Yeah, I, I, I've seen we all have a real self, right? We all come into this life. We're all born with everything we need to have an amazing time. And for one reason or a hundred reasons, you know, we decide that our life is, you know, too short, too bad, too, too poor, to 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 slow to to limit it and and all of those things are made by the choices that we make you know and and we all get influenced whether it's school or parents or relationships or money or health or whatever we all get influenced by a million different things but all of those influences are simply something we allow in right you know we le we let you know a fluid in influence you know so we allow this energy to flow in and you know I'll tie it back to thought and that I strongly have found for myself can't tell anybody that most of the thoughts that come in are not mine. I don't know where they come from. Maybe I allowed them in as a child, but I would see from TV, from media, from bad influencers and influence from bad whatever, you know, there's this echo in your mind that, you know, if you tell yourself something is good or not good, or you're stuck or you're not stuck, it seems to be agreeing with itself and it echoes around. You know, we, we talked about the time loop and it spins in a circle and it doesn't go anywhere, right? It, it's like li literally lost in, in a cage in your mind. And to me, that's what makes time speed up. Because when you take yourself out of there and you go into the all of everything, or you go into the timeless area, we've all maybe had experiences with power plants, maybe in our dreams, you know, maybe in our meditations, or, or maybe in a moment of peace and quiet, where time has vastly changed in relation to what it usually is for us. Mm, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> If the voice in our head was us, then, you know, <laughs> most of the time it's not very nice, right? I mean, most people, we all have this voice in our head. Nah, 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 nah. And most of the time, you know, it, it's, well, for most people, it tells them what they can't do, right? It's restrictive. So is that you? I would say not. I would say, you know, at the very least, it's just a, a conglomerate, right, of, of the external world again. It's all the peers, it's all the, the power structures, whatever, telling you what they want you to believe. And you can believe that or not. That's up to you. But but that, to me, is is proof that it's not us. I mean, all, all people, you know, are amazing. They're all built from love, you know, however you want to say it. So if that's true, how do we end up with this voice going, nit, 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 you're not enough, nit, 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 you can't do that, nit, nit, nit you know this is the the voice that we've got to get over because it's not ours and then thought well uh, is thought ours you see the thing is our mind we don't think in our mind our mind is a receiver it's a radio station basically and so what you know we can tune into different things but we've all had these random thoughts right they just pop into your head and it's like where's that and i do it all the time you know because nothing that, that i ever do is scripted and so I'm, you know, talking away and they'll say something. I'm like, oh, that's not bad. Where'd that come from? You know, so I, I really believe that we're more like a, a conduit for, for you know, to bring things into the, into the ex, you know, the physical world, if you want. But, but yeah, do we think our thoughts or do they think us is, is I guess, the question. Well, Sharon, I'm going to just answer one of the comments here. You know, you, you say you've always made wrong choices or is it too late? There's no really, in my opinion, such thing as a right or a wrong choice. There's only a choice you've made. And if by wrong, you mean it hasn't turned out the way you wanted it to turn out. Maybe you can explore your motivations. Maybe you can explore your habits. Maybe you can explore your belief system and see why these choices always seem to be wrong. Right. And so to turn around at any moment, I mean, it's never too late as long as you're breathing. I feel, you know, if you're here and you're alive, you can always make a new choice. You can always understand. But and here's the big but. And Kevin and I have talked about this a lot. You really have to understand yourself and why you've made these choices, why you keep coming to this place of unhappiness. Let's say if that's what you mean by wrong choices. You know, I, I'm only guessing. And if you find for yourself why you're unhappy, then maybe you'll be able to turn that around and make new choices that will allow you to go to a place again by your own uh judgments on yourself because no one can tell you what's right or wrong for you 
uh, where it is that you wish to go and why you haven't gotten there yet. And I, I feel, you know, a deep exploration of our childhood is essential since it's us and that's where we started and that's how we came here. So by understanding who you were when you got here and how you've allowed that to be changed, you know, through outside influences, you might be able to pick up, you know, the pieces of what you've left behind and then and make different choices that will show you it's not too late. Yeah, I mean, I would say there is no such thing as a mistake. It's just a miss take, right? Just like in the movies, take one, take two. You know, if if they're filming a scene and an actor stuffs up his lines, they don't, you know, the director doesn't throw up his arms and go, oh, my God, it's ruined. Let's all go home. Oh. They just take two, right? They do it again. And that's exactly what, what a mistake is. It's just, a, it's a learning. That's all it is. So, so the only way that, that you, you know, fail, if you want to put it that way, is if you don't learn the lesson. And then you, you basically you'll go back to the same spot and you'll have that lesson, the same lesson will be put in front of you. And you can choose to learn and go forward or to ignore it and, and do the loop again. So, you know, there is no right or wrong. It's just all experience. And as long as we're learning, then we're going forward. Like, I mean, God, I've made, you know, more, you know, mistakes than anyone probably, right? We all do it. Everyone does stupid shit. Everyone makes bad decisions. But as long as you're learning from that, then it's a win, right? It's a win. Of course it is. You're going forward. And, and those those lessons and mistakes, they're just there to help us. When we decide that we want something more, you know, for our life, whatever it might be, the universe will go, really? Okay. And it'll throw challenges at us. And, you know, we can interpret these as, oh, my God, it's so bad, it's so hard. But really what it is, is the reason you don't have what you want now is because you're not that person. You're not emitting that from your from your inside self, right? So uh, it's just the universe going, well, you want to change. Here's an opportunity to, an opportunity to change. That's all it is. And you can learn from that or you can not learn from that. That's your decision. But as far as mistakes and right and wrong, I don't believe it, right? Um, you know, they attribute the quote to Shakespeare, um, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And uh, hello, Raised by Giants. Nice to see you. It's been a while since you and I chatted, and that's a great question. Yeah, I love that question. Right. Why has nothing changed despite, hold on, it's moved despite there being so many people waking up? Well, that is a loaded question in so many ways in that depends what you mean by change, depends what you mean by waking up. For me, everything changed. So <laughs> I have nothing <laughs> in common with, with the outside world because, well, first off, everything's always changing. You know, so it depends what you mean by that. I mean, you know, life is change. You can't stop it from changing mm -hmm. from the time you're born to the time you die. Uh, you know, basically can't step in the same river twice, as they say, you know, all, all those things. It's one of the oldest quotes. So things are always changing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of deciding what you mean by waking up, which doesn't really mean anything because you can't really be asleep. Right. You can be lost in habits. You can be lost in in beliefs. You can be lost in, in, in limitations, of course. But, you know, you're awake as soon as you're born, you're awake. You're awake for the rest of your days. You know, what you do with that awareness, and what you do with that uh, perspective is up to you, right? I mean, as long as you're alive, you have life. What you do with that, you know, so that's what I'll equate being awake to. I'll equate awake to having, let's say, organic life as, as we have. So you're awake. What you do is up to you. You know, internal or external awakening, you know, Campbell and I are going to talk about that, the difference, but you can't change the outside world. It, you know, you can only change your world which will change your outside world, let's say. So your experiences will be different in the day. Uh, everyone else, well, that's up to them. It's really not, you know, I, I don't want to say I don't care. I mean, I still love everyone, but I don't care because I can't care. Everyone needs to change themselves for themselves. Everyone needs to pick up their own responsibility. And from that, really, you got to go back again and examine who you are. You got to find your real self. And I would say that's the problem for most people is they don't know who they really are. They don't know who they wish to be. They're not aware of what dreams they want to make real. And so they're just lost in this mishmash miasma of, of ideas and, and, and intent and rules that were given to them instead of probably what they came here to do, which is something we can all explore and figure out for ourselves. And yeah, yeah. The only, right. the only right. constant is change. Like the only constant is change. Like things cannot stay the same. There is no stagnation, right? Um, clearly. 
And yeah, as far as, you know, why, why is, is everyone waking up and there's no change? Well, I would say for me personally, the last four years have been definitely the biggest change, you know, in, in my life, in my reality ever. Like I've, I've gone through so much change. And I guess the question is, what, what's our reference point for that? Are we saying that the outside world hasn't changed? You know, because, I mean, clearly it is, but, you know, if you're talking about, you know, the power system, why hasn't this done? And um, Well, again, I, I'm looking out at the world and I'm seeing a lot of change. I'm seeing a lot of these power structures and these stars and these people that are put up in front of us for us to worship, they're all crumbling and falling over, man. But, it, but the main thing is it's a reflection of us and, and the change is going to happen within you. You've got to bring everything back to the to the internal, to who you are. So all we can do is change. You know, it may be, you know, for some people, the external world's not changing fast enough. Well, that means we're not changing fast enough because, again, it's just a reflection. So if, if we're focusing on the outside world, then we're not making that decision, you know. So, so look at the change within. Have you changed, Ryder, in the last four years in the last 10 years in your life have you changed uh, you know I, I, I would tend to believe that you probably have and so it's the perspective that we're looking at are we looking at the outside world saying well I wanted it to change more and it hasn't you know because again when that happens we need to bring it back to ourselves and realize that that's us that haven't changed enough or that haven't changed quickly enough yeah, it's like the, you, you say it in your question, right? Or thinking of an external change, like, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but who cares? You know, like if you want the government to change, you want the rules to change, you want the chemtrails to change, you want the politicians to change. Well, like, who, like, whatever, you know, we asked to be here. We asked to be in this situation. We asked to be in this life. And if you don't like something in the external world, you can change your internal situation. Right? You can move to a different area. You can, you know, have a different relationship. You can change your diet and stop eating altogether and become a breatharian. You can, you know, understand time for yourself. You can understand your imagination. But I feel, and the reason most people's lives don't change is they're really not willing to take full responsibility for everything they create on a day-to-day, -day, moment to moment basis and accept the circumstances as something that, let's say, if you didn't make them, Although I think you do, you at least ask to experience them. And then if you find out why you ask to experience, in your case, let's say a world that doesn't seem to change as much as you want, and you put the responsibility back to yourself, maybe go back to your childhood, you know, maybe, maybe really, really take a deep internal dive into why it's all your fault, your life, I mean, whatever is happening. And that's the thing most people, most people will not look at that. Yeah. Why, why their life sucks and fill in your own reasons, 12 reasons your life sucks, according to you not according to me, and then take responsibility for them. And you'll probably find if you do a deep enough dive, you might be able to at least change some of those circumstances by allowing yourself to understand your role in them. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you beat me to the to the crunch here, So I was going to say, um, guys, everything is your fault. All right, now don't yell at me. Now, I've said that to lots of people and lots of people lose their shit and they're like, how dare you? This isn't my fault. I didn't create the government. I didn't create the money fiat system. I didn't create war. Yeah, but everything is your fault because you are creating everything you interact with. And the funny thing is when I talk to people and I say that to them and they're, they're happy and they're successful in their lives, they're like, yeah, you bet it's all my fault. Of course I created this, man. I worked hard. It is my fault that I'm living the life I want to. You know, we, we're sort of taught by the outside world that that's a negative thing. But, guys, it's, it's one of the most powerful statements I think there is, one of the most powerful you know, belief systems, because if it's not your fault, you're, you're, you're stuffed. There's nothing you can do. If it's the outside world's fault, you then have to go and change you know, they say, right, 8 billion people, you've got to go change all their minds. If it's your fault, you just got to find a mirror, talk to you, and you've only got to change yourself. All right, that's where the power is. So everything is your fault, guys. Don't yell at me. <laughs> and, 
and it's like there's too much war like we get the politicians we deserve i've heard that you know we get the life we deserve if we don't make you know introspective analysis no one wants to do it exactly writer so that's the problem it's like it takes a very 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 brave person to do a deep introspective dive on themselves you know i literally four or five months six months ago I had to look at the seven thousand ways i've been an asshole in my life okay to other people to myself to everyone from the time i was five to the time i was 55 right from my friends my you know ex relationships my, my jobs my people my my current relationship myself my wife you know campbell everybody like i in some ways by being selfish i'm saying that's you know not considering the world around me and i've done that a million times you know i was not being respectful let's say of the life around me and everything involved in it and what they needed to do i was just considering my own perspective on what i wanted in every moment and trying to make that real instead of allowing everything around me to come into fruition and probably because i was afraid you know i was afraid someone wouldn't like me or i wouldn't have money or i'd lose my relationship and usually it comes down to that why people don't want to do introspection is they're afraid of seeing their responsibility and being a bad mother let's say being a bad father being a bad sister being a bad brother being a bad husband being a bad wife being bad to yourself if you've been good to everyone else in the outside world you know how are you at war on the inside when you don't want to experience wars how is your mind clouded with 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 chemtrails if you don't want to see that like if you've got fuzzy in the brain right how are you unhealthy because you're you have unhealthy thoughts or ideas or or perspectives or or or, or beliefs limitations all of those things and I found for myself, once I accept how I've been horrible, then my life magically and, and, and miraculously literally starts to change in front of my eyes, literally that second. Mm. But I have to accept how I've been horrible, how it's my fault. You know, that's that, <laughs> that is, we talk, Campbell and I talk about it. That's a key and a crux and, the, and, and I think non-negotiable because if you're mm. responsible, then you can be responsible for everything in your life. Yeah, you can't, you know, fix a problem if, if you don't know that you've got one. Uh, it really comes down to that. And and if you're not, you know, living the life that you want, if you're not joyously happy and all this kind of stuff, well, clearly it's because you're doing some wrong things, right? You've done some wrong things. You're, you're focusing on some wrong things. And and that's what we need to, to, to look at. How have I stuffed up? How have I been bad? How have I been the asshole? How have I been the instigator of crap? Because unless you can see that, you can't change it. You know, unless unless you're true with yourself, you can't live true to yourself, right? You can't be who you truly are. So so this is the thing, you know, uh, the, the outside world and all the new age, you know, people, they, they want you to focus on, you know, only your wins. And look, you definitely should. When you have a win, you should be proud of it. You should acknowledge it. When you when something good comes, you should be thankful for it and understand that you had a big hand in that, right? But we also need to know where we've gone wrong or else we can't change it. And, and you know, Lorenzo and I were having a chat the other day, and this is another reason why, you know, the thoughts that, that come into our head that we think aren't necessarily ours is, we were talking about, you know, recapitulation and, and blah, blah. And I just said, look, if we don't know our story, how can we change it? And I've never had that thought before. It just popped out, right? And this happens to me all the time. But, but you know, it's, it's not a bad little thing, right? I'm not claiming that it's my wisdom. But if we don't know the story, how can we change the story? If you haven't read the book, how can you make any changes to it? So it's if you don't know yourself, how can you change yourself? You know, we've got to go into those dark places. And I'm not a big proponent of shadow work, but it's more we've got to understand where we messed up, how we were the bad guy, how, you know, because otherwise, how did we get here? If we're not going to be willing to acknowledge that, then what we're saying is we're a victim of external circumstances which is a place of powerlessness. You can't change that if you're trying to change the outside world. All change starts yeah. from within. Most people don't want to look at their shadows. Most people don't want to look at their dark side. And I found that's where all the power probably comes from. You know, that's where all your change can come from. That's where all your better life can come from. You know, perhaps an exercise for, for those years, you know, write down 10 things you're afraid to lose. 
You're afraid to lose self-worth. You're afraid to lose your money. You're afraid to lose a relationship. You're afraid to lose the monetization of your channel. <laughs> well, we'll say I won't point <laughs> your finger at anybody. Some, some of the chats we've had in the past. And then that you, you literally put a stranglehold on your life when you come to that afraid to lose, right? Maybe you won't be honest with your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or husband because you're afraid to lose them, right? Maybe you won't be honest with yourself because you're afraid to lose your job. Maybe you won't be honest if you've been a bad parent. And I come across a lot of people because you're afraid your children won't love you or you'll lose them or whatever. Because if you're afraid to lose something, basically that is, is a bottleneck, quite literally an in your neck. And it's a bottle and it keeps you up here in your head because let's say your heart wants to admit it was wrong. Let's say your heart wants to be free from a relationship or a job. Let's say your heart wants to you know, move to Bali and become a, you know, a, a basket weaver, but you know, you're afraid, you know, you, you won't have enough money to pay your mortgage. So that is going to like literally strangle your imagination or your intuition or your will and your intent bottle neck, you know, eh, like bottles have these little tiny bottles so that you can't allow your energy to flow, your currency to move. And that will stop you by your own admission. Again, nobody's telling you what to do, but that will stop your dreams from coming true because you have a bottleneck or a fear. And usually that's an uncomfortable place to go. Cause if you look in that shadows and see where you made that challenge, maybe you chose the wrong relationship. Maybe you didn't really want to have three kids when you were 22, but it happened for, you know, sexy reasons. You know, maybe you chose a job you don't really like because you know what, you know, we've all done that. We, everyone's been there, but you know, uh, or you've chosen a job for monetary reasons, but your heart says, why the hell am I doing this crazy job? But, you know, I like my stakes and I like my mortgage and I like my fast cars. And again, if you're afraid to lose something, that's probably the best place to start if you're not happy with something in your life and you want to see some change. Mm, yeah, I mean, as far as external things, you know, possessions, possessions, hello, possessions possess. Hello. Yeah. hello. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, if we, you know, desire change, we have to deserve it. So who do we need to de-serve? Who or what do we need to stop serving? That is what deserve is. It's not, <clears throat> look at me, I deserve it because I'm just a nice person and I'm love and light. No. What do you need to get rid of? Who who or what, what belief system do you need to stop serving? Do you need to de-serve? Okay. And this is the thing, right? Our, our language is spells. So we really need to, you know, have a look at what we're saying. I remember when I went out and met um, Uncle Lewis, one of the, the original elders in Australia, and, you know, I would talk to him and ask him a question, and he would just sit there and consider it before he answered. You know, in, in the Western world, we're so quick to just, bleh, right, babble, right, to babble on. You know, this is what we do, and many people are thinking of the answer that they that they're going to give while the next while the person's talking. So they're not even in the in the moment. You know, so I think if we take more more interest in what we're actually saying and the spells we're casting, and understand what they are, then that that helps a lot, right? So yeah, if if you deserve something, if you want to deserve something, what do you need to stop serving, right? Then and this is the thing. We, we need to bring it back to us and look at ourselves. It's all our fault. You know, where do we need to change so that we can get to where we want to go? Because the outside world will give you, you know, they'll tell you everything. But, I mean, what are your results in that? Like, so this is the other thing. People don't look at results a lot. You know, what is the mm. result of what you've done? You know, have a look at it. Did it work? Did it not? You know, because again, it's not a mistake. It's just a, it's just an opportunity to, to learn and to grow and get you closer to where you want to be. Yeah, I think there's a huge difference and a misunderstanding with people between selfish and selfless. Right? You know, selfish is not so bad to be self-concerned when it's up to you and it's your responsibility and you have to make choices. You literally have to turn to yourself first. And I don't mean to be mean to other people because sometimes selfish is like, you know, you're, 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 you take the biggest piece of cake or, or, or you don't care if you rip someone off in, in some sort of monetary transaction or, you know, you, you get what you want over what someone else wants. That's what I, I don't mean that by selfish. I mean more like you have to look at yourself and see how it is that you're making what you need to make 
because you're the only one that can understand your own changes because they're yours in the first place, right? You know, and, you know, uh, being a fool is amazing. Making mistakes doesn't make you a fool. You know, I, I'm happy. Like, I've been the biggest fool in the world. It's great to be a fool. Who cares what people think? You know, I don't care about nothing anymore as far as as, as if, if I look foolish simply because that's not why I'm here, right? I'm not here to have someone agree with me or to think I'm great or whatever. I'm literally here, I've seen since I've been a little boy, just to kind of experience the kind of loving life I wish to experience and to allow that to resonate out into the world. You know, plant seeds, as, as someone said, you know, plant seeds of awareness, if you like, or plant seeds of consciousness. And, uh, you know, who cares what comes from that? It doesn't really matter, you know, uh, as long as, 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 as you're dancing in a way that makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody, the rest... You know, fertilizer, fertilizer for next year's crops, I feel. <laughs> yes. And hello to everyone in chat, by the way. Thanks for being here. I see Martin's dropped in. Hello. Hippie Shakes here as usual. Um, uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate you all. Uh, and of course, please give us a like, leave us a comment, share this around if you like the content. But, but this is the thing. Ultimately, we are here to live our lives. We're not here to live anyone else's life. And even if we want to, we can't. Your experience is the only one you can ever have in this realm, in this body, right? So, so why are we spending? Not, you know, why are a lot of people spending so much time trying to change other people? You know, because everyone's on their own path. It's not up for to us to tell them to change, but we can learn. We can learn from other people. You know, if people piss us off or if they're annoying or they're such an ass, or how dare they do that? How dare they say that to me? Ah, bring it back. Why are you getting triggered? Because it's the whole thing about triggering, right? You can be in, in, you know, a circle of 10 people and say something. Not one person will react the same. You might have two people who get triggered and the rest don't. What does that tell you? That tells you that this is all inside of you. It's not what other people say. It's how you interpret it how you react to it, right? You know, and, and this is a thing. Do you react? Do you just act the same way over and over? You know, or, or maybe it's better to resolve things, right? Resolve them, solve things, right? Like, like we, we have choice. And this is, I think, you know, what we're trying to get through is, is it, it's up to you. It, it's all you guys. And, and when you get down to it, can we even prove that anyone else exists? Right, because it all—it's all happening within with within ourselves. It all looks like it's out there, right? But it, it's not. It's all in you, and and this is why we are creating the experience that we interact with. You, you know, look around the world, right? It, we're all in the the same world, um, but some people are having an amazing time, and and the world's the best place ever, and their life's amazing. Other people are like, oh, my God, this is the worst life ever. You know, I'm a slave. It's a prison planet. Bloody the government, the tax. Or no, 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 no. You know, I mean, you know, the cost of living, right? You know, it's it's getting expensive for those who don't have any money. You know, if you're worth $100 million, would you even care? You know, this is the thing. Everyone's having a different experience, but but everyone's creating. Hey, Mark, love to have you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Here you go. No, no worries. Just want to say hey to Martin because he said, "Oi, and Martin, I'd love to have a chat with you one day. I've appreciated the work you've done, and I've watched you off and on for years. So uh, at some point, yeah, let's get together and discuss some wonderful things. And I like Lexi B. We need to look at why we changed as children. We had no realizations of making mistakes. I would say that's probably, in my opinion, one of the wisest comments in all the comments that have been put down today because that's asking us to look at ourselves that's asking us to see who we were when we were little. That's asking us to understand, you know, again, I don't think there's a mean creator. I don't think there's a mean God. I don't think there's, you know, I mean, there's lots of demons and devilish like uh, energies floating around in this world. There's no doubt about that. But I think the one that gave us life, the one that gave us this consciousness, the one that allowed us to come into this world, the one that allowed us to have the <laughs> gift of this, this experience has given you everything you need to make the best life that you can make. You know, not to have what you want, but to make the best life you always dreamed you could make from when you thought you wanted to make something when you were a little person, a little boy, a little girl, whatever. And if you understand why you gave that up, as Lexi said, 
No, you've programmed yourself. We haven't been programmed. That's the trick there with that one sentence I saw. Nobody yeah. programmed you. You know, you programmed yourself and therein lies the responsibility. When you saw something on TV, when you saw something when you were four, when your parents said, you have to be like this, even you were four, you agreed to it. That's the trick. You know, you saw something on TV, you said, oh, this is how I'm a man. This is how I'm a woman. This is how I make money. You know, this is how I'm happy. This is the beer I need to drink to find sexy ladies. Whatever those commercials used to tell you, right? You know, you know, th this is the hair cream I, I, I need to, to get, you know, all the love I've ever always wanted, right? Oh my goodness, this is what I better do. But you decided to allow those programs, those rules, those limitations, those beliefs uh, into your life. And by allowing them in, you can realize how you can ex escort them out again, if you like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, just on the word programmed, right? Again, what is that? Pro, like grammed, grammar, words, spells, pro is for. So, you know, a program is you saying that you're for a certain narrative. But, but you don't have to be for, you can change it. And yes, there's a lot of people who try and program us, a lot of systems who try and program us. But again, you have the choice. You have the choice. If someone walks up to you in the street and they say, whatever, right? The world's a, <laughs> the world's a rock spinning through space. You don't have to believe that. And you also don't have to get triggered. So why do we think that when it's, you know, it's society and the bigger society that we, that we lose that choice? We don't. You can, you can say no. I'm not interested. It doesn't, you know, it, it, I don't agree. You know, are things getting more expensive? Well, again, are they? Are they for people who have lots of money? Are they for people who grow their own food and make their own energy? It's all perspective, man. This is the thing. And it's, it is the, the program, right, the spells we choose to believe that, that you know, create that reality. So just, just choose to unbelieve them. Choose a different way. Choose to believe yourself, right? Why, why do you think you're wrong? What, because other people say it? It doesn't matter. You, you can be right for yourself and that can be wrong for someone else. What, what's right for someone is not necessarily wrong for someone else or right for someone else. You know, we, we all have this choice. And every time that we say things like, oh, but the government, oh, but the system, oh, but this and this... We're just giving our power away. Like, I don't see it any other way. You're just saying to the world, sure, control me. Control me, right? Let the trolls con you. That, that's, that's all it is. And, and, and we don't sponge things in unknowingly, maybe unconsciously. There was a comment there. You know, Yes, you know, you take things in when you're two or three and you accept them, but the more I've recapitulated my life and looked back, the more I've seen, I agree to everything. I, you know, I, I can recall agreeing to crazy things when I was four, when I was three. I can recall agreeing to crazy things when I was two. And sure, your parents influence you. Sure, you have less filters when you're small, which is great. That's why you can learn things so quickly. Uh, but if you're going to go back to full responsibility, my, in my opinion, is we choose our parents. I think we all come in here with a task. Maybe you want to straighten out a bend, a distortion in light. So maybe you choose the parents that are living that distortion. My parents had plenty of distortions or plenty of <laughs> wrong ways to be. And, you know, you know, as everyone's have, I think, I think probably all of us can agree that all of our parents have been crazy in one way or a hundred or unloving in one way or a hundred or what have you and taught us weird, weird ways to be alive, whatever those are. But I think, I feel, it's not a think anymore. I feel we chose those parents so that we can come in and get, like you can't straighten out, like Campbell said, you can't fix a story you don't have. You can't straighten out a bend that you that's not inside of you. So we ask for a certain story or a certain beginning, let's say, if you want your parents to be the beginning of your story. I did not choose what's on the billboard. Don't be so so silly, Mr. Intel. I think you know, you're not paying attention. You know, if you, you, you didn't choose what's on the billboard, but you can act on it or not, right? You can do something or not. But again, I, I digress. We choose our life, we choose our story so that we can see how to become from there. And that's the full responsibility from first breath to last of the ability we all have to find our real selves by understanding why we came here from the beginning so that we can see where we're going and how we would like our destiny to be fulfilled by our own 
choices, actions, examples, intent, will, all of those lovely things. Hmm. Yeah, and I like the comment by Random Channel. We are all angles of light, which is angle, angel, right? We all see life from a different angle, from a different perspective, from a different spectrum, whatever you want to put it. And I think the angels are the ones who understand that, you know, understand that everyone's got a different angle. Of course they do. Like, like I mean, what, what do we want? Do we want everyone to be exactly like us? I mean, that sounds like the most boring thing in the world, right? I mean, you know, I, I like myself, but I mean, you know, I don't want to be surrounded by myself because then I can't learn. Then I'm stuck. All this external, you know, information that's coming in is for us to learn, you know, and maybe we didn't build the billboard, but what, is is someone holding your, your, your head and telling you you have to read it and telling you you have to believe it? And even if they are, you still don't have to. Like, we have choice, guys. We have choice. And we can choose to give that choice away or we can choose to, to hold that choice and to use it and to become who we want to be. It's all choice, guys. Yeah, there's, there's a big, you know, I think someone said before, we've all been indoctrinated. Well, the same thing. What is indoctrinated? It's someone else's doctrine, right? Someone else's perspective of how you should live and they're trying to put it into you. Do you have to take that in? Of course you don't. Of course you don't, you know, because people sort of say, oh, my gosh, we've been indoctrinated, we've been programmed, we've been blah, blah, blah. And look, yes, the, 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 the system has definitely tried to do that to us. But where are we now? Most people in this chat don't believe the system anymore. Isn't that proof that you don't have to believe it, that you can break it, that the power is you? No, no, not everyone in the world is walking around like a drone believing everything on the TV. Right? So that's that's proof that the program can be broken. You don't need to take their spells into you. You can reject them and you can create your own. You can be magic again, right? You can be the spell breaker and the spell caster. And, and to me, that, that's a much better position to be in because that's the creator. We are the creators, guys. We're creating this, not someone else. And I've said it before, this is what they love to do, right? If they can get us to believe their program or their indoctrination, right, their spells, their grammar or their doctrine, then we create the world that they want. But why would you give why would you give your energy away? Why would you give your power away like that? Be the creator that you are, because you can't change that. Everything you need is inside of you. If you want a better relationship, become a better person. That's all it is. You just need to become the person who is worthy or, you know, deserving of the partner you want. I mean, I've never, ever seen it happen any other way. So, and and again, you can choose not, not to believe me because I don't want anyone to believe me, but you can choose to consider these thoughts or you can choose to, to call me a dickhead and full of crap. Whichever way, it's still a choice, right? And, and it, it's all in you. Right, you are the zero point. You are, you are the creator of your life, basically. You know, and if you want all your power, if you want all of your energy, if you want all your luck, let's say you want all your currency, you want all your wonderful experiences, you want everything. They're all you. you they can't help but be you. We, you know, in, in my opinion, we make our life, we create our life. It all comes from the inside out, and so that's exactly why Campbell and I have been sharing, you know, you have to take responsibility for what's your fault. And it's not because we're being mean, or it's not because we're being moral, or, or it's not because we're good men or, or any of this stuff. It's, it's, it's literally an energetic fact that if you don't accept everything you've created, you can't um, increase your power by reclaiming all the power you gave away, right, to whatever it is, if it's a belief or a system or a rule or an indoctrination or a billboard, Wherever you, I mean, that's a silly place to give your power, but wherever you decide to give your power, you know, uh, whatever that is, if you claim it back, then you can use it for something else. But you first, or I first have had to admit to myself where I've given my own energy away, where I've given my perspective away, where I've given my belief away, where I've given my choices away, you know, whatever, whatever I gave away, whether it's on purpose or subconsciously, doesn't matter if it's subconsciously, it's still conscious, so bring it up. It's your consciousness. The subconscious 
choose again choose it to become conscious of your own subconscious and remember to see where that can take you so that you can be happier in ways that you wish to be happier yeah man take take the power back um you know i've definitely been through some challenges in the last four years right and that's probably an understatement to most people you know if you heard the full story but i, I had a choice I, I could have you know sat in the corner and started crying and gone oh my god the world is so so mean to me how dare this happens and blah 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 and and you know don't get me wrong there was definitely times that i, I, I swore at the creator you know but this is the thing i, I chose to, to do to keep going I, I chose to not let the outside world defeat me i chose to use my power to live my life and that's as simple as it gets you know I, i've been to 10 countries in the last year do you know i didn't pay for any of it it cost me not one cent how is that possible most people would say oh no but you need money if you want this you need do you i didn't if you believe you do sure okay nice but but this is the thing i chose i i and i spoke it to the world i said i'm traveling i have no idea how i'm doing it but i'm doing it anyway and it happened and like i said I, i've been to uh, 10 countries right i went through about i don't know 10 states in the us as well didn't i, I didn't pay for any plane tickets guys I, I didn't cost me anything so you get to choose your life you can choose that it's hard and oh my god i can't travel because i don't have enough money and oh you know it's so it's so hard that i'm not in what the place i want to be and blah 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 or you can choose to believe that everything is energy you were the creator and all it takes is a change in your mindset right a change in your belief your internal belief of, of what you're capable of and it's it's a decision right it's a decision just just speak it to the world write it down and so be it be it of course you need to put some action in i mean i'm not telling you to sit on the couch and wait for someone to save you because that's not a good plan because if they don't turn up you're going to be on that couch for a while right but this is the thing you speak it you, you be it and you start to walk in that direction you start to do things and then when things pop up you thankful for them and you you follow that path it's, it's really that simple you, you can do whatever you want and no one's ever going to convince me differently because i've done it i've done it so it's true for me for me it's true it doesn't matter if it's true for anyone else it's amazing you just got a god voice you just got a god voice when you said that your your speaker went high and, and the tone changed it's really interesting suddenly, see suddenly campbell's god voice came through which is really interesting you know that that, that uh, you know and he didn't ask for this i mean that's part of the magic that we can't talk about that's part of the understanding that words won't cover you know that's part of something we all have to figure out for ourselves yeah, and that's part of how we have to understand we create our own life even if someone else gave us the life, uh, Mr. Lou Sapphire, you know, uh, I, I would disagree with that. I would say in some ways we are the creator. We're the creator of our own experience anyways. You know, someone created us. It seems to me we were given that life. But maybe it's time, Campbell, to talk about the course we have coming up starting November 23rd in a couple of weeks for 20 lucky participators who are willing to see the difference between free and freedom. We're going to do Find Your Real Self 10 weeks straight leading into the new year every week where we can participate and you can participate in finding through your own interactions and your own effort uh, the experiences Campbell and I have had to find our real selves and to allow that to change our lives as we've decided to make it so for ourselves yeah yeah man so if you want a bit more of a deep dive on on some you know perspectives and some some other um, things to contemplate um, <clears throat> you can join us uh, it's going to be 10 different sessions, you know, around sort of 60 to 90 minutes each. And we're going to deep dive on, on what exactly is it that is keeping you where you are, that is stopping you from, from you know, interacting with the life that you that you want to interact with. Because you know, I've never met anyone that, that doesn't say they want more, more experience, more whatever, right? More love, more money, more whatever. So, you know, if you're you know serious and, and you do want to create change 
and you want some, um, you know, some things like that you can, you know, because we don't want to tell you anything. These are all just ideas, and and we we know we can't change you, but we can definitely influence you with, with some, you know, which basically means we can put out some concepts that maybe you haven't thought of before, that you haven't, you know, realized, right? Um, and then through that, you can create more change in your life. So uh, it's it's not, it will be up and uh, ready, the, the link next Sunday. Um, if, if it's done before, I might put it up on my channel through the, the little, whatever it's called, <laughs> things that you can put up. Um, but yeah, you know, if you'd, if you'd like to do more of a deep dive on this, then yeah, there, there's definitely something we're working on that will, that will, um, that, that you can be a part of if you'd like to. Um, and, and you know, it's yeah. interesting when we, when we talk, you know, on these concepts that so many people are so against it. You're wrong. You know, it's not true. Look, if it like, um, three fingers, I love you too, mate. And he still disagrees. Well, that's just going to keep you in your place, mate. Like I've done it. Like I said, there ain't. There's no one that will convince me that it, it's not possible because I've done it. I've done it. I've been to America twice. I went through Europe. I went to Venice, all through the Balkans. Didn't cost me any money. If if it's not true, then how how is that possible? And are we the creator? I'm not saying we're God. We're a spark of the creator. Okay, we we are the creation, but because of that, we have the spark of the credit, which means we're creators. So if you want to create more, you know, in your life, if you want to go forward, if you want to stop going around in circles and stop running into these these lessons that that we don't get over, then in my perspective, the best way to do that is is to bring you information in to get more things to think about, more things to contemplate, and, and start to move forward so we're gonna um get the link up definitely for next sunday you'll be able to click on it and check out what it's all about but yeah if you would like to spend 10 weeks going basically over christmas and into the new year you know if you want your 2025 to be something better something different than, than you've experienced then um yeah check it out you know in campbell's way of doing this travel i've seen a lot of questions how did you do it how did you pay for it that those are really the wrong questions, I feel, because you're like trying to take it back into your thought process. Campbell did it the way Campbell did it, right? Martin did it the way Martin did it. I also went to the United States and traveled. You know, I did it the way I did it. You know, you know, my 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 energy or the savings or energy came from a different source. Campbell's came from a different source. Maybe Martin's came from a different source. It doesn't really matter because Campbell's challenges and his life and who he is is not who you are and your challenges and your life. I couldn't travel the way Campbell does. I can't even share the way he does. He still blows me away in these conversations because where I want to get more sharp, he gets soft. You know, where I want to get soft, maybe he gets sharp. But it just goes to show you, you know, there's as many perspectives, you know, on this lovely plane as there are people on this lovely plane and as many angels and angles as there are people. And maybe that's why all snowflakes are different. All people are different. Everyone's different. And maybe that's the beauty of life is you can, you can and in fact, I would say you must figure it out for yourself since it's your life that you mm -hmm. are creating and making. You know, Campbell and I are going to look at imagination. We're going to look at intuition. We're going to look at uh, uh, inside outside world. We're going to look at dream recovery, exploration, recapitulation for sure from your childhood to find out why you feel you came here. You know, so dream recovery from when you were little, I think is essential in all of this. And it will allow you to find your real self for yourself. Again, we're not going to tell you because we can't. But by sharing these 10 weeks with us and the other people in the class, so to speak, you may get an opportunity to find new information out and new intuition and new inspirations that will help you get closer to your real self. What a, what a, what a beautiful gift for the new year. What a great resolution. What a, what a great way to be. You know, it's not going to be free. Maybe next week, Kemble and I are going to do a live on the difference between free and freedom because they're not the same. Free is one thing. Freedom, you can't buy it, but it still costs you everything from what I've seen. And so that could be a whole other conversation that we can have. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted to mm. see the 20 participants because we're going to max it out there so that we can give some personal attention to what's going on in that. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're starting November 23rd. That we know. November 24th for Campbell and I. November 23rd in North America. Uh, 3 p.m. ish. For Pacific time people, you know, 6 p.m. for uh, Eastern time people, 
And in my opinion, even though we haven't announced a price yet, it's going to be a bargain no matter what we charge. Um, no, all is a tool. And it's interesting. See, what you're focused on is is the outside yeah, world. Money. The point is anything is possible. It's the possibility that I'm trying to get across to you. And like Lorenzo yeah. said, what worked for me is not going to work for you necessarily. All right. So you've got to get off that train, mate. If you want change, that train is only going to take you to the same station where everyone else is. It's once you understand that you are the power and anything is possible, that's when possibility will come into your life. You know, I, I could, I could, you know, I mean, you know, I spent years making videos and putting them out there and not, not really getting paid for it, not making much money, but I was putting something out into the into the world right i was putting myself out there and what happens when you do that and you do it and you're not expecting to be paid you know money or whatever for it the universe you have to get that energy back and i'll leave it at that that's how it's possible be the change that you want to see because no matter how you see the exchange as having to exchange coupons or digits or gold doesn't matter. It's like how it ends up in your life is between you and the universe, right? Whether somebody paid for Campbell's or somebody donated or someone gave it is a thousand percent irrelevant to the conversation. You know, it's more like you intend to seek a way towards a, an experience, whatever that is. And then you let the world tell you how that's going to happen for you. Again, what happened for Campbell might not happen for you. It might. What happened for me might not happen for you, but it's not supposed to happen that way because then that's a planned programming way of doing it in your head. And so then you're back in linear time. We didn't really talk too much about time. So as you get into linear time, Campbell did this, then he did this, then he did this, and then his results were this. And you go, oh, I want to copy that. But that's not the point. You can't copy Campbell's four points because you're not Campbell. You know, you know, you have to take yourself out of time and let your intuition, let your story uh, in inform you of how you got to where you are so your story can inform you of how you can change. And that's between you and you. And again, if you're pointing fingers, you're, you've lost the game already. It doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree. That's so irrelevant. It's ridiculous. It's such a waste of time, you know, because why are you here? I would say you're here to find your own story so you can make yourself into the kind of being you always wanted to experience. That's my opinion. Anyways. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, most people out there in reality they they live their life outside in right they let the outside world influence their inside world try flipping that try letting your inside world influence your outside world and that's it something to ponder guys but i mean it, it's all possible I, i've seen it i've done it i've lived it i've seen other people do it and I've seen many, 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 many people say, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? They don't live the possibility. They don't get what they what they say they want. So, so to me, it's it's quite simple. It's it's you're thinking backwards is really what it comes down to. You are the power. You are the creator. If you believe that and you live that and you understand that everything you need is inside you and all the answers you ever need will come to you, then awesome, you're, you're now creating the life you want. If you expect the outside world to change for you before you can change, you've lost the game. It's that simple. So I'll leave it with that. So, yeah, guys, um, thanks for joining us. Leave us a comment, leave us a like, share this around if you like the video. And if you're interested in, in spending a bit more in-depth time with us, then we will have all the links ready for next week and we will be back next sunday or saturday night if you're in the us same time same auto time same auto channel um and we'd love you to join us again and thank you for everyone for being here thanks for, for all your contributions and uh and yeah um everything that you said but uh the main thing we want to get across is we don't want to tell you anything we just want you to contemplate some of these concepts and so you know you might come up you know you, you might decide that we're full of shit that's fine. That's awesome. At least you've made a decision for yourself, right? But the main thing is contemplate it. How, how does it feel to you? You know, where is your power? How are you actually going to change stuff? Because 
you know, you point the finger, it's three pointing back at you. Well, where's the camera there? Right? Uh, it doesn't change anything. For change no. to happen, we need to change. If anybody has any questions before even next week, leave a comment here under the video. I check them out. Leave your email. One of us can get back to you. You can go to my channel and leave comments as well. You know, and uh, yeah, just leave a comment. Well, I check them all out after our, every video pretty much and I'm happy to get back to you and answer any questions even before next week if you have an interest in what we're doing or anything else we've chatted about. Yes, and yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I put the, the email in. If you, uh, I'll grab, put the email in the comment in the description now. So if you've got any uh, questions or whatever before next week, you can email that and um, we'll get back to you. So yeah, thanks for spending some time. Power. Yes, for what, what, what is it? On the email. Full four power, the number four, F U L L, full four power at gmail.com. F U L L as in not empty, four as in the number, power as in what you want to increase with our the course and what we're doing, full four power. There you go at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, we get that email and that's the one we're going to use for this particular show anyways, or this particular, uh, you know, event coming up for us. And we'd be delighted to see you all there, or at least 20 of you. And then we might yeah. do another one, out. at least 20 of you. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure it's, it's, it's helpful for everyone who participates in the best way possible. Exactly, guys. Thanks for joining us and stay awesome because you are. Till next week.